I said before, it helps to visualize, right, and see what's going on so that you can try and predict what you're going to get at the other end and then prove it algebraically, okay? So you have P moving around someplace such that the angle you get from A to that point to this other point to B will be 90 degrees, okay? Now I can draw a couple of these very easily because it's a, you know, I've got perpendicular coordinate axes, right? So for example, the easiest spot where I can put this is, that's where P can be. That's a right angle, right? And I could put one on the other side. That would work just fine, okay? But there are other spots. There are other spots. For instance, uh, by side about there should do it. I've got another right angle there. Right? I could do another right angle maybe here, say. Over there. Okay. I could maybe go here, and I think I'm pretty much going to stop there. Right? What does this thing look like? Circle. That, my friend, is a semicircle for me. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the angle in a, let's put it in there, the angle in a semicircle is always 90 degrees. That's actually the exact wording of one of the circle properties that you learned. Right? So what I'm tracing out on this side is a semicircle. I can have that 90 degree angle happening oh, on the other side as well. So I'm expecting a circle of some description, right? By the way, what circle is it? AB is important to this circle. What is AB to the this circle? Diameter. It's the yeah. diameter, right? Okay, good. So I've got a couple of parts laid out in front of me. I could say, right, if that's a diameter, then the center of this circle ought to be in the middle, the midpoint of that diameter. Right? Once I have the center of the circle, what else do I need to define a circle? Radius. I need the radius, center. right? I can find the coordinates here by doing midpoint AB, right? And then I can find the radius by going from, you know, from here to here. Or to A, if you like. That'll give me the radius, okay? That's fine. That's correct. There's a more direct way there. Well, have a look. I read the have a look, right? <laughs> okay. APB equals 90 degrees, right? So. Let's take, uh, let's take this example of P, right? Now what you can see is that AP and PB, right, they are perpendicular. That, that's what it means to have this 90 degrees, right? AP is perpendicular to PB. But that means something, think coordinate geometry, think coordinate geometry. That means something about the gradients of these two intervals, and doesn't it? Yeah, when lines are, when intervals are perpendicular, their gradients should multiply to give negative one. Okay, see that? See that line I just wrote down? Color, here we go. This line here is my entry point. Just like this line is an entry point. And I didn't write it here. This line is an entry point, right? Once you know the geometric feature that you're going after, the rest is algebra. What is the gradient from A of AP? It's rise over one, isn't it? There's no gradient. There's, well, okay, I mean, for that particular one, it's vertical. Yeah. But it could be anywhere, right? I just picked out one example. Okay? If this is A and this is P, I take the gradient to be uh, Y plus seven, right? There's rise. And run will be x plus two, right? Okay, there's the gradient of AP. What's the gradient of PB? It's going to be? Y minus one. Y minus one on? X minus four. Very good, and that's negative one, okay? We've been doing some quadratics recently. You see them there? You see them there? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, what am I going to get here? I want a pair of numbers that it's going to I'm going to add them to get y squared plus 6y, and then I'm going to multiply them to get minus 7. Yeah, that's just my expansion. This negative 1, I'll just leave him at the front for a second. What's going to come over when I cross multiply? x squared minus 2x minus 3. x squared, he adds to that, and he multiplies to that. You happy? Okay. So what have I done? I've got these guys on the top, and they become this. I've got these guys oh, on the bottom, and I've just put them over the other okay. side. Now, because they're negative, I can just add them all over here, right? I can just add them all over. So I've got y squared plus 6y minus 7 plus 
this whole thing, because I've got a minus sign outside the whole piece. Okay, now remember what you're anticipating, right? Does it look like what you're expecting? These are the right pieces, aren't they? I just need to um, complete the square a couple of times, yeah? So if I um, take the negative 7 and the negative 8, kick them over the other side, they become 15. You okay with that? What do I have to add to this to complete the square? I halve, which gives me 3, and I square, which gives me 9. Very good. There's one piece. What do I have to add to this to complete the square? 1. You added 9 and then you added 1. That's adding 10. Okay. And now I've got my perfect squares, right? y plus 3. x minus 1. What's this guy? That's 5 squared, isn't it? Okay, so I have my center and I have my radius, which of course you could have found by doing midpoint and then by doing the distance formula. But this way directly gets at this property that they gave to us, right? Which, by the way, is just another way of proving that the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Because I never invoked that. Did you notice? I didn't need to say that's true. I've proven that it's true. I've gotten a circle at the other end. 